Hi, I'm Edwin Chavez. And I'm Alex Thompson. Welcome to this edition of JVTV News. Chances are, there's a part of Ben that you haven't seen. Along with the new season, directors are incorporating new techniques and tactics to raise the standard. Adam Poli drums up a story. The Falcon Band has been working towards a more mature program, and that's exactly why they're making more changes this year. Well, we've gotten many different directors that have been retired and has also come. For example, Mr. Kidwell, he was the head director my freshman year, but then he retired. And we got Mr. Montesinos, who left us last year, and we got a new director, Mr. Stahl. Like, when Mr. Stahl came, he brought new cadences, and they're really fun, so that's obviously positive. While the students are hard at work outside, the parents are working just as hard behind the scenes to make everything run smoothly. Um, well, I've been a parent volunteer for five years, and in the last five years, we've gone from 100, about 175 kids to over 250 kids. It's a huge difference between even like feeding 175 kids and 250 kids. It just takes a lot more volunteers to do. I like chaperoning. It's fun. And giving out drinks at games. It's fun. I just like being with the kids. With so many changes going on, the band program is thriving and will only continue to get better. Adam Poli, JVTV News. This year, the hallways at JV have been looking more crowded than usual. Montserrat Valero brings us the story. Here at JV, one of the biggest problems we face are the crowded hallways and classrooms. As years go by, our number of students keep increasing, making this a problem that our counselors and assistant principals have to fix every year. Last year, the school population was only 3,407, and this year it increased to 3,547, including 873 seniors, 787 juniors, 899 sophomores, and 988 freshmen. We asked Mr. Brock to tell us more about this issue. This is my eighth year here at Jersey Village, and when I first came in, we had just over 3,400 students, uh, and now we have about 3,560-something students. We try to get temporary buildings so we can have more classrooms available. Uh, we're using all available classrooms as it is right now, and we even have teachers who, when one teacher is off on a conference, another teacher floats into their, into their classroom to use it, so we're utilizing all our space. We just need more room. With portables and classes being added all throughout the year, counselors and administrators are working extremely hard to balance this number out and make the best out of this school year. Montserrat Valero, JBTV News. Hey, why are you on your phone? I'm on Twitter and racial issues are some of the trending topics. Well, what are some of the issues? I have an idea, but let's go to Sydney Williams for the story. Racial tensions is nothing new. From slavery to the Jim Crow laws, our country has been divided for several decades. Recent events such as the Charleston church shooting have contributed to the racial tension in our nation. However, the citizens of Cyprus would have never expected an event such as the shooting of Officer Goforth in their own community. Racial hate crimes can happen anywhere. Why does it seem to be accelerating? I think people realize they have a voice and people don't like when people start uprising and stuff. Well, I think it all depends, not, not even on races. I think it depends on how people are raised. There's racial injustice in the world because people experience the world in a different way and therefore they have a different perception of the world. Racial injustice is caused by people who think that someone of other race or of other ethnicity is as equal as they are. What their race is, it's more important than the other, and it's not. I mean, we're all, we're all equal and all of our lives matter, and that's what everyone should remember. With the attention of racial hate crimes, could social media be the culprit of the heightening tensions too? I definitely think social media affects racism due to how you know, different races are portrayed in different pictures and websites and like videos and everything. I think social media affects racism because it gives everybody a voice. But mainly because it gives like a bigger outlet of what the v world's views are. With the use of like hashtags, like um, all the activism that's going on now with social media, you can actually like promote more of a less um, close-minded society. By taking biased opinions from social media, racial tension has increased. One way we can decrease the tension is to acknowledge racism exists, but not spread it through social media. 
Sydney Williams, JVTV News. Oh, I'm so tired. Why? I had to work late last night. Oh, that must have been hard for you. Yeah, it was. It's hard for a lot of other kids at school, too. Asma Martinez takes us more into the story. Although students go to school for seven hours a day, some also go to their jobs right after. As of October 2013, 47% of all youths ages 16 to 24 were employed in any work, either full or part-time. We talked to a couple of students on what's it like to balance school and work. I'm a cashier at my job and what we do is we take um, to-go orders and also through the phone as well. The National Center for Education Statistics show more than two-thirds of high school students were employed during their senior year, with 22% of those students working more than 20 hours a week. Well, it depends on my availability because sometimes like, I have to juggle between like the clubs I'm in and like my internship. And my pharmacy hours, so like sometimes maybe like 15 to 10 hours a week. While some students work just to buy what they want, some students work to help out their families. I have a sister on the way, and with today's generation, I know she's going to be expensive. And so by doing my part, helping my parents, I know I can help with my money that I make throughout work, that it can help like my mom with a little, like a little like, support-wise, so where she doesn't have to feel like it's just her and my dad raising my, my sister to where I could feel like I, I took part in raising her as well. I was working towards a car, but um, I've been working since, what, junior year, December of last year, and I managed to save up for a car, and so, um, no, no, now, right now, I'm not working towards anything really, ex except for paying off my car, so. No matter how many hours or how many days a week these students work, they still find a way to make time for school. As Bill Martinez, JVTV News. Next up, we have stories about recycling and more. But first, here's a PSA by Cruz Fernandez, Montserrat Valero, and Jenny Tran. I am CT. From filled green tubs to overflowing trash cans, CFISD has decided to cancel the recycling program at Jersey Village High School. Kaylin Campbell tells us more. Jersey Village High School has participated in recycling for many years, but recent changes have canceled that privilege. The, uh, we had to remove our recycling bins uh, because of a, the city of Jersey Village was concerned about the appearance and the positioning of our recycling bins. The decision to remove the bins was influenced by multiple factors. The company didn't come by and empty the bins as often as they should have. And so sometimes the overflow of paper would be out in the open for rainstorms to dampen and for the wind to blow it all over the place and it became a, an eyesore. It became a big mess. Although recycling is gone, many different ways of helping the environment are taking its place. At this point we need to accept the fact that we're not recycling and find an alternative. Find something else that we can do to channel our passion into helping the environment. You know, we may not be recycling, but that doesn't mean that there aren't other things that we can do. The club is collecting cell phones, and we're using the donation of the minerals that are found in those phones to support the primates at the Houston Zoo. Um, there's a big program at Herman Park where students go and plant trees and just rake leaves. And I know that sounds silly, but it's those little things that help keep the park healthy and then help improve the environment. Um, Kaylin Campbell, JVTV News. Don't go anywhere because welding and dress code are coming up next. But first, here's a public service announcement by Miguel Ruiz and Alex Thompson. Are you sure you don't want to ride? No, I'm fine walking. I'll see you later.
Welding offers a world of opportunities. Logan Nemeth gives us an inside look. Before you think you've done it all, there are a few interesting things you may not know about JVHS welding taught by Mr. Pearson. After practicing the basics of welding, learning many tools they have in their disposal, and knowing safety precautions, the students can then move on on planning the projects. I've worked for, with a couple of companies. They've come in and hired some of our students. They get learn how to use all the tools in the shop, learn how to weld. So when they go out in industry, they know more than just welding. They know the fabrication, fit up, and how to use the tools in the shop. Doing projects and also getting certifications can help students get experience on welding, which can provide for their future career. A career in welding can open up more job opportunities, as well as earning an average $40,000 to $50,000 salary. To see all the students follow a career in welding or be out in the fabrication industry because it's such a need, it's like to see industry coming to us for people coming out of high school to go into employment. Welding is a class where you get to learn a new experience in craftsmanship and also giving you a different perspective of what you want to do for your future career. Logan Nemuff, JVTV News. Now we have Amber Alexander with Lifestyles. Thanks, Alex. Did you know that two-thirds of students get less than seven hours of sleep? Veronica Sessman tells us the real effects of lack of sleep. Come on, you gotta get up! Sleep is something everyone needs in order to live a healthy life. So we asked some students how many hours of sleep they get on average. Four at the minimum and six at the most. Five on average. I get five hours of sleep. Two. Maybe five to six hours every night. Instead of wanting to learn, you want to use those hours to sleep. I miss notes and important information. We asked a Jersey Village counselor with psychological knowledge to give their thoughts on sleep deprivation. It's a really big problem. Um, with students losing sleep, it puts them at a difficult, in a difficult position to remember things. Mm -hmm. Because part of the function, it's been scientifically proven that teenage brains do not operate the same as adults' brains do. Mm -hmm. They absolutely do not work well super early in the morning. With heart problems being one long-term effect, there are also many short-term effects, such as limiting your ability to learn, listen, concentrate, and solve problems. Many forget important information such as names, numbers, homework, etc. And that stress hormone will have long-term consequences on your heart because it can cause plaque buildup in your heart and you can actually die earlier if you're not getting enough sleep. This is Veronica Cespedes, JVTV News. Many of us have been to the rodeo, and barrel racing is one of the most popular events. Horse riders have been competing all over the world for ages. But do we really know what happens behind the scenes? Ellis Bonesing takes us behind the barn doors. Horseback riding. People have been doing it for centuries. Even today, people of all ages enjoy going to the arena, like the equestrians at Cypress Riding School. I really like the atmosphere of riding horses. I just think it's really cool that I get to <clears throat> spend time with horses all the time and I've been riding so long and it just gives me the opportunity to learn about how horses are and how they act. Equestrians spend so much time and money on horse riding, especially if they participate in competitions. I think that competing in horseback riding is a lot different than any other sport because you can't really communicate to horses like you do with humans and it's really focused on you and all the pressure is against you. Even if horse riding is a competitive activity, many people do not recognize it as a sport. I think people should consider it a sport because they don't understand how much effort it is to control these huge animals and how much work it is to take care of them. I think it should be a sport because it's in the Olympics. It has its own thing, there's rodeos and stuff. Even if it's debatable whether horse riding is a sport or not, it's amazing to see how these high school students put so much time and effort into something so unique. Ellis Bullington, JVTV News. Hi, I'm Ethan Vito and Falcon Sports Center starts now. The Jersey Village football team didn't have a great start, but the team's effort remained unaffected. Juan Ortega kicks us off. 
The Jersey Village football season has started with a slump, losing a series of consecutive games. But even with these demoralizing defeats, the Falcons continue to strive for a win. We worked hard at practice, so even our second stream got it good. So if somebody get injured, you know, hope you get better, man. But the next person behind me got to step up and play. They know the calls, you know, they own Bar City. If they, they've seen you, they should know how this is supposed to go. So it's not really a big deal because they should be expected to go out there and play. Um, it takes a lot, man. You got to be really dedicated to it. Um, you, I would have to wake up around 5, I have to come to film at around 6.50. And then we get out of practice, we go home around like 4 or 5.30. So it takes a lot. You got to really be dedicated. As you can see, the players continue to practice hard Monday through Friday to ensure a win as well as stabilizing their grades to secure some playtime come football night. We just got through with um, doing our grade report. We do them every six weeks. We have to turn one in the athletic department. And uh, this is the first time that we're at 10% out of 200 and 81 kids, I think we had 30 fail, which is unbelievable. I mean, that's it's 10%. Our goal is to get 10% or better. My goal would be obviously, I mean, that's the district's goal. Obviously, my goal would be zero failure rates. But then, uh, it affects all of us. You know, like I said, you need to respect me, I respect you, and you need to respect your teammates because we are a team, and it's a team-oriented sport. Uh, we need everybody, regardless if if they play or they don't. I mean, you know, uh, you know, this is the ultimate team sport because it takes everybody to win. As Coach Snookhouse mentioned, every player is needed not just on the field, but at school academically to win in a team game. Juan Ortega, JVTV News. Thanks, Ethan. That's all for this newscast. Make sure to check us out on all our social medias in the description box below. For Edwin Chavez and all of JVTV News, I'm Alex Thompson. Thanks for watching. Hey, you guys, so JVTV is now on all the major social media sites, so make sure you go follow us and see all the biggest news with JVTV. Alright guys, so first on our social media is Instagram, make sure to follow us on Instagram, you can see everything we got behind the scenes including more, make sure to follow us. So JVTV is now on Twitter, don't forget to go follow us, see all of our latest updates, like a few posts, and don't forget to give us a lot of feedback. Alright guys, so JVTV does have a YouTube channel, you can subscribe, watch all of our videos, all of our final products. Uh, make sure to like and share to show your support.